Hi, I'm Crystal Smith. I'm the director for CIDT, which is the Center for Instructional Development and Technology. We're glad that you're joining us today. I'm going to give you a quick explanation of what this live session will be like. And we will also, we are having a few technical difficulties. Let me just be honest with you. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm going to let you know kind of the format, and then we're going to introduce some of the staff in CIDT and be answering questions. First, up front, let me um, explain that during this live session, you can ask questions. This is interactive. So after I introduce some of my staff, we will see what questions have been asked, and we'll answer some of those up front. Then we'll get into our presentation. We're going to take you through the who, what, where, when, why of orientation. We'll also do a walkthrough so that you know what to expect. Um, and then at the end, we will pick up any other live questions that we've missed throughout the presentation. So are there any live questions for me to answer before, right now? Yes. Tell me what they are. Right. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Haley Hamblin asks, where can I find the gold orientation? All right, so the gold orientation is in Blackboard. You actually get your Blackboard account as soon as you're admitted in Southeastern. If you have an email account and you have a Canvas Connect account, you also have a Blackboard account. So log into your Blackboard. Your username in Blackboard is going to be your first initial, last name, and the last two digits of your student ID. Your password is your eight-digit birth date. So log into Blackboard at blackboard.se.edu or from the Southeastern webpage for current students to get in and see orientation. You'll be able to see it in your course list. When you click on it, you'll be able to get started. We'll be walking you through what it looks like at the end of this presentation. Are there any other live questions? Hannah Hudson says, I have my orientation badge, but I don't know how to submit it. Perfect. Perfect question, and that's a question that a lot of people have. We're actually going to show that, but just as a quick answer, in case we, in case anybody drops off before the end of the presentation, to submit your badge, you'll actually go into your classes. It's actually an assignment in your classes. So when your class opens, which most classes will open seven days before, or at least during the week before classes start, at that point you'll be able to click on coursework and see an assignment labeled orientation requirement. That's where you will upload your badge. As soon as you upload it, all of your weekly uh, folders will appear so that you can start uh, reviewing the course materials. But again, you're not going to submit it in the orientation course. You're actually going to submit it in your courses and meaning any courses that require it. So if you have four online courses, you're probably going to submit it four times, one in each course. Um, you'll, you also may submit it in some of your face-to-face -face courses. Are there any other live questions? Yes. When do classes become available? Okay, the question was when do classes become available? And I answered that a little bit, but in case you didn't hear it, most classes will become available next week if they are eight-week or 16-week um, classes. Uh, Seven-week classes start the uh, the 27th. So in other words, if your start date for your class is August 20th, most classes will become available August 13th or in, in the few days after that. If your class starts August 27th, most of your classes will become available August 20th or within a few days after that. Um, You'll, you'll see those appear automatically. If you do have questions or you're concerned if a class isn't popping up, you're welcome to contact us. Um, teachers do have until um, until the start date to turn it on, but especially if, if they require the orientation, they'll probably turn it on early and we and most of them up to a week in advance. Um, I don't, I'm not aware of any that are available yet though, so don't panic. Um, you, they won't be online until seven days prior. All right, any other live questions? Um, how many times do I have to take the orientation? You only need to take the orientation one time. And that does not mean one time per semester. That means take the orientation one time. 
Um, if you take it right now, even if maybe all of your classes are face to face and you don't need it for those, um, it's still a good idea to get it done because you won't need to do it again later. You'll need to get the badge at the end and take a screenshot of it, save the screenshot. In fact, save it in as many places you can so you don't lose it. We encourage also emailing it to yourself so that you can search in your email. But you only need to take it one time. You just need to keep track of your badge. Um, as you, as you go through your programs, you may need to submit the badge multiple semesters. So if you have it done now, you're submitting it this semester in the spring, you may be asked for it again. Next summer, you may be asked for it again. Just keep that picture and you're never going to have to complete the orientation again. Any other live questions? Can professors view our badge? Yes, your professor is going to view the screenshot of your badge that you submit. There are several um, indicators that let them know whether it is authentic. There are several different views that you can take that shows whether it's um, accurate and they've been informed of what those are. So they will have a way to know if it is legitimate. So uh, make sure that you do complete it and submit something that proves that you've really completed it, but they're gonna see the image that you send them. Now here in CIDT, we're able to open that up and see and confirm if a teacher has a question about whether it's real, then they can ask us and we can pull up your information to confirm whether or not you've completed it. Any other live questions? All right, while we're, while we're waiting for some more live questions, we're gonna introduce a few people first. I mentioned that I'm the director of CIDT. Our assistant director is Alicia Reidenauer, who is walking over here right now. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you all. Hi, I'm Alicia Reidenauer. <laughs> she was only. And Jason Stowell is the guy who fixes all of the problems every time you see an error. Is he on the phone? He is on the phone <laughs> fixing an error, probably. <laughs> we also have Krista Ramirez. Krista Ramirez helps. Um, she is an instructional designer, meaning she helps us get courses ready and online. She also helps with the website and, of course, with building the gold orientation. <laughs> Hi. We also have a lot of student workers. Let me mention that you are able to get tech support in a variety of ways. We in CIDT are in the Russell Building, which is also labeled John Massey School of Business. We're on the third floor in R317A. You can come in anytime. You can also call. You can also email CIDT at se.edu. Also on the Blackboard login page, there is a technical request uh, form, uh, support form that you can submit at any time. And if you ever have technical difficulties, if you will send that in, it'll give you an automatic timestamp to reply so that your instructors knew, so that you can prove to your instructors you reported that there was a problem in case they don't believe you. So you were trying to get out of an assignment, there's your proof. Also, we have a live chat feature, which we have someone manning until 1 a.m. So if you have questions, if you have problems with Blackboard, including the orientation, um, you can get on live chat and ask our student workers. Um, they, they are very knowledgeable about the orientation as well as troubleshooting any issues that you may have in Blackboard. So some of our student workers, we have Dawn Smith, who is actually responsible for putting this whole YouTube live presentation together. She has worked very hard on this today. <laughs> well, thank you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we have Jared West. Jared and then Ben, get ready to come. Jared <laughs> West is a name Hello. you may be seeing on live chat. <laughs> and so is Ben. Uh, ben especially helps with a lot of those late nights till 1 a.m. We also have Kanan Bow Bowman. Um, he is he is our newest student worker and is getting trained very fast and has been helping a lot today to get ready for everything. We also have Haley. Haley is bubbly and exciting and loves to be helpful. So she Hello. loves it, <laughs> loves it when you have questions. Thank you. Um, 
We also have a couple of, um, we have Dina Roman, who helps us with our videos in all of our classes. We try to get our instructors to make some videos for you. And Dina is, um, help. Dina helps them to get those videos done, both with shooting and editing. You may also see her at some events with a camera. Homecoming is coming up. Watch for her and say hi. We also have um, Jerry Knight. <laughs> Jerry Knight helps us with our IETV classes. Um, so you may see him up here if you come and he will also be helping with a variety of technical support as well. Thank you. All right, are we ready to start? Uh, Dave Campbell says, don't forget me. Dave Campbell is also <laughs> someone who is not going to sit right here unless he runs really fast. But Dave, you can run really fast and get over here so you can wave at the camera. <laughs> but he also does photography and video. He helps with marketing and you will see him at homecoming and all the events. So maybe we should like post a picture of him so they know who to look for. <laughs> He would love that. I know he would love that. <laughs> All right. Are we ready to? How are we doing? Still going. Yeah. Well, we have more questions. Okay. Live questions. Uh, can I email my badge instead? You can email your badge, but it won't get you anything in your class. <laughs> so if you have technical problems and your instructor tells you, yes, you can email it, then they can go in and fill in a score manually, but it's not gonna be automatic. You're gonna to have to wait until they get a chance to do that. If you submit it the right way in Blackboard as the assignment, it's automatic. So as soon as you submit your badge, everything shows up for you. Any other live questions? Yep. What happens if I lose the screenshot of my badge? All right, if you lose the screenshot, then, um, then I will try not to say I told you. No, just kidding. <laughs> if you lose this screenshot, you can go back into orientation and get a new screenshot. However, if we update the orientation, which is going to happen periodically, then you it may not show that it's complete anymore. Um, you will be able to look at the check marks and see what's missing. If you call here and let us know, we can go in manually and fix that. But we would prefer you keep up with your screenshot. Um, Typically, the things that we would be updating um, would be the tests and the surveys. So if we update the test, then it will no longer show that you've completed the test. And that's for either one of them, the fast track or the traditional track. So best case scenario is put your badge on your desktop and your documents and your downloads and a flash drive and an external hard drive and email it to yourself and as many things as you can do. Um, however, if you do lose the badge, no, you do not have to take all of orientation again. You should probably just call to call CIDT, which our number is 580-745-3185. And we have several full-time and student workers um, to help you. We actually have more student workers who aren't here today. So you didn't meet the full staff for CIDT. Any other questions? Do I have to complete fast track and traditional track? No, don't. Do not complete both fast track and traditional track. Only do one, um, unless you're one of my student workers and then I make you do both. <laughs> <laughs> but the traditional track is intended for new students. Fast track is intended for returning students. Now, we don't do anything to monitor, so you're welcome to try either one. If you are a returning student, but you would prefer to go through traditional track and see everything in there, that is totally fine. If you are um, a new student, but maybe you have a lot of experience with online classes already, maybe you um, are coming from a school that used an LMS already, maybe you've already taken some classes in Blackboard, you're welcome to try the fast track. The way the fast track works is you'll have three attempts to take the test, you need to score an 80% or higher. If you score um, below an 80%, you'll be able to see which questions you missed and it'll tell you what objective in traditional track to go look at. So if you, for example, see objective 4C, you'll know that that question was about 4C. Instead of looking at everything in traditional track, you can go look at just 4C in traditional track to review it before you retake the test. If you don't make an 80% or higher on the traditional track after three tries, you're gonna need to, I mean, on the fast track. Um, if you don't score high enough after three attempts on the fast track, you will need to go and do the traditional track. Any other live questions? 
We'll see it here now. All right, we're having Tara Thompson asks, how do you get your orientation badge? Okay, so the orientation badge is on the left side of the course menu in the orientation. So when you open orientation on the left, and we will be showing all of this right now and just answering questions. Um, to be honest, I'm stalling for technical difficulties, but we're almost there. But um, when we when you open the course on the left menu, you'll have a coursework button. It says required. That's where you're going to go through all of the um, the requirements to get your badge. But your badge itself is in another menu button, um, a little bit below that, labeled your badge. When you click on that, you're going to see several images. One has a running guy, another has a check mark. Those are the two orientation badges. The running guy is fast track, the check mark is traditional track. Um, if they are in full color, or if one of them is in full color, you're done with that badge. Um, if neither of them are in full color, then you have not earned either one of them. To see what you have or have not earned, there is a list icon in the top corner of each badge. When you click on that, it tells you what is required for that individual badge. If everything has a check mark by it, you're done. If it if you're not finished, you'll need to figure out which one is missing the green check mark. So a lot of times students call here and tell us that they think that they're finished, but it's not showing that it's complete. So we just go in and look at, at which item is missing the green check mark. And that's what you need to go. A lot of the orientation is based on kind of a contract style meaning that you just need to mark that you've reviewed that information. There's a button labeled mark reviewed, similar to a contract where you would initial that you've reviewed that information and agreed to it. So there are a few things in orientation that you submit or test to take, but the majority of it is just click the mark reviewed button that you have reviewed and are aware of the information in that, um, in that section. Any other? Um, Sorry, Tara Thompson also asks, is this just to fill us in on what to expect for orientation? Yes, watching this video does not equal you completing orientation. So I definitely want to be clear on that, that you are not right now taking orientation. This is to answer questions about orientation. So um, once this is done, once you have the information, you need to get into Blackboard and complete the orientation. Any others? The black and the orientation cannot be taken outside of Blackboard. It is in Blackboard. You have to get into Blackboard. Um, can we review this video after the live feed ends? Yes, you can. We will send out the link in all the same places we sent out the invitation. So it will be sent out in email. It will also be posted on the Facebook sites. Okay. Any others? How long will orientation take? So orientation could take a different amount of time depending on the students. Now the fast track, you can probably finish in about 30 minutes, but the traditional track, anywhere from four to eight hours, probably most people more like four to six hours. Um, and the reason for having more, it really depends on how much of a background you have with technology and how comfortable you are with technology. If you really have not been in an online environment very much, then you'll probably want to review it a lot more and look into that information as much as you can. Students who do have more of a background uh, with online classes, whether or not it's in Blackboard, um, if, you if you're comfortable with technology and you've had some experience taking online classes in any form or online workshops, you'll probably get through it pretty quickly. Even if it's a traditional track, you'll probably be able to get through it pretty quickly. Any others? How long will orientation take? That is the one I just oh, answered, right? Oh, that's right. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I skipped ahead. I skipped ahead, I guess. What about Bolt? Yes. Bolt, very good. Thank you. So in the orientation, you'll see a button uh, labeled Bolt. In fact, later you'll even see one that says Storm. Bolt stands for Basics of Language Training. It's a resource for grammar and format. So you can go in there as, as, as a refresher. It is not part of the required orientation. That's why in parentheses it says optional. If you click on it, it will tell you that some, some instructors require parts of it. Um, so it'll have modules on commas, on pronouns, on MLA format or APA format. Those are self-paced. 
Um, so it's really hard to tell you how long those will take because if you are pretty good at commas, you'll get through it really fast. If you are not very good at commas, you may spend several hours in there. Uh, but that's something that you can do on your own to review um, just as a self-refresher. In fact, right now would be a really good time to go through some of that as you get ready for your fall classes. Writing is important in every class. Um, every one of your professors wants to see a coherent communication, whether it's a paper or a discussion board or an email to them. Writing is always important. So if you just want to do some refresher to make sure you're ready to go with your writing skills, I would recommend that you get in there and work through some modules in Bolt. However, it is not required um, for the orientation. It, it can result in badges, but not the orientation badge. Some instructors will ask you to complete a badge within Bolt. Um, some of them will just ask you to complete a certain module. For example, if you're not very good at commas, you may have an instructor uh, who grades your paper and says, you know what, I've already marked what commas you have in here. I really need you to go into Bolt and do the, the module on commas and send me a screenshot showing that you've finished it. Um, so if you already know that you struggle with certain areas of grammar, you could go in there in advance and that way you can expect better grades in your classes or at least at least expect to do better and not lose points that would have been lost for the sake of grammar. Where is Bolt located? Bolt is in the orientation. So when you open orientation, you'll see coursework, which is required. You'll see Bolt, which in parentheses says optional, and then you'll see your badge. But it's it's housed within the orientation. Any others? What is Linda? Since the orientation mentions it. They mean Linda.com? Linda <laughs> yes. Okay, Linda.com is a resource that you have. It's not required, it is a resource. So some instructors will use some Linda.com videos. It's, it's kind of like YouTube, except much more professional. It gives a lot of tutorials. If you want some instruction on how to do something in Photoshop, something in even PowerPoint, any kind of tutorials, um, there's a wide variety. There's business skills, but it's very skills based. If you want some tutorials on things that you would like to develop skills in, you can go and take video courses through lynda.com. Um, you will actually, res it'll result in a certificate also. So it's really nice if you can share their, those certificates on LinkedIn. Um, it's something that you can put on your resume. So it is something that's really good. It's um, some teachers have it, um, some videos from it in their courses, but really it's a resource for you to use on your own to have access to. It's a great resource that our university provides to students right now. Is there an orientation for math? There will be some, uh, so Bolt is Basics of Language Training. STORM is under development right now. STORM um, stands for Supplemental Teaching of Remedial Math. So that will give you some basics in math. It is not live yet because it is still under construction. Um, in the next few months, you'll probably see it pop up there as well. And we'll send out an announcement to let you know that it has launched. Any others? And the orientation stays in your course list throughout your program so that you can refer back to it. So if you don't need to memorize everything in there. As you're going through, um, you don't need to memorize every piece of information and where to go to get everything and bookmark every link. Um, you'll be able to go back in there. Just get familiar with it so you can go back and find where that information is. Um, but we'll also, as, we, as things change at the university, then we'll update the orientation, but we'll also send out announcements so that you're aware of those things, which is why you don't need to retake the orientation but we'll just send out announcements letting you know new information or new resources available. Is it ready to launch? Um, there's one more question. Will there be an on-campus orientation as well? So um, I don't want to get this confused with SE Live and some other orientation type experiences. This is not SE Live. It is not college success. <coughs> um, we do have um, some workshops scheduled where you can come to CIDT and go through the orientation. However, 
that is still just coming up here and going through Blackboard with us around to help. You're doing the same thing either way. That's not required. It, the orientation is designed for you to complete it independently. But if you want extra help, extra support, you're welcome to come up to CIDT at one of those scheduled times or just let us know when you would like to come up. Um, we also have some Zoom sessions. Zoom sessions are a little bit more like this where we just do an overview and let you know um, what to expect. The live sessions here, are it's easier to have those longer. So if you wanna come up, you can spend as much time as you want while you're here and get those ready um, and get it completed and we can help you get your screenshot and everything. All right, we have a presentation prepared and we will be launching that in just a minute. We, um, it is almost ready from what I can tell. <laughs> and I'm sorry that this has been a little bit different format from what we originally intended. We are gonna be showing screenshots, screen shares so that uh, we can show you how to complete each aspect of the orientation. <coughs> what would be the most time consuming part of the traditional track? Um, the most time consuming part of traditional track, um, I believe a lot of students have said getting through the library quiz um, takes a little extra time, mainly if you're not familiar with the library. Um, a lot of students don't have a very strong background in how to search. Um, so you, that's a skill that you're gonna need to have to be successful in your classes, um, especially in your upper level classes, you'll use that more and more. So we want you to have those skills. Um, there's a quiz that goes with that. A lot of students say that that takes a little longer than other areas. Um, there's also a time management plan. And some students say that that takes a little extra time um, to complete that. Yeah. Austin Grant also asks, so I'm scheduled for a Zoom session tomorrow. Is this the same thing? So this is actually probably going to be a lot more in depth than the Zoom, <coughs> the Zoom session. However, the Zoom session is an opportunity for you to talk one on one with me with me or Alicia um, to ask your individual questions once you get started. So if, if you feel like you've gotten everything you want out of this, then um, you may be ready to go and jump in. If after this you get into the orientation and realize you're still some confused about a few certain things and want help with specifics, you're welcome to join and just ask those questions. Uh, when I do those Zoom sessions, I always start with individuals. Those Zoom sessions are always really small, um, four people at the most so that um, we can talk about your specific questions. So if you want, have a few questions you wanna ask and then head out, we could do that in as little as five minutes or less. And, um, and for others, if you want a full walk through, then that's fine too. Okay, is the presentation ready? All right, hit play. <laughs> Welcome to the orientation Q&A. We're glad you guys could join us. We'll try to answer all your questions. You can also send questions live through the comments and we'll try to answer them. What is this? Do not use all caps in any online environment, including emails. This is considered shouting. What is the online orientation? Well, GOLD stands for General Online Learning Directions, and it covers everything you need to know about Blackboard, about other Southeastern technologies, student services, and how to learn online. Who's got to take it? You mean who has to take it? Always use correct grammar and spelling. What if I don't want to use correct grammar and spelling? You don't have a choice. Be careful with humor and sarcasm. One person's humorous comment can be another person's degrading remark. Use proper spelling, capitalization, grammar, usage, and punctuation in all forms of communication in an online environment. Who has to take the orientation? Well, it's intended for online students. However, some of the face-to-face -face instructors are going to require it as well. We really encourage all students to go ahead and take it. You only have to take it one time and then just save your badge. So even if you're not taking an online class right now, you'll have the badge ready to submit in a later semester if you do take one, or if one of your teachers does require it now. Hey, why do you need to take this? This is hey. Please do not address your professors with that salutation. Use professional language when emailing your professors. Why do you have to take the orientation? 
Well, when students don't have an orientation experience, your first course becomes orientation by default. And a lot of students' grades suffer in that scenario, and sometimes students drop out. So having the orientation is our attempt to help you do better in your online classes. Bro, how to submit this badge? All right, so we're gonna go over how to submit your badge. First rule of netiquette is to use appropriate language. Excessive use of chat or instant messaging jargon is not acceptable for Blackboard discussions or emails. So how do you submit the badge? Well, when your course opens, which is about seven days before the start date for most classes, you'll go into the coursework section and you'll see an assignment that asks you for the screenshot of your badge. That's where you're gonna submit it and as soon as you do, all of your weekly folders will open. I'm still a little lost. Can you walk me through this? All right, so getting started with the orientation, we'll go into coursework. And you'll see that all you can see is the program group right here. Now there is more, and if you read through it, it says this will automatically release content through the orientation design for your program. So it's talking about how if you sign up for a group, you'll be able to see the rest of the folders in coursework. So it's part of adaptive release. Um, adaptive release is a, pro, is a part of Blackboard where if you complete an action such as uh, participating in a group discussion, um, signing up for a group, completing an assignment, something like that. So adaptive release is something that will force you to do something before you can see something else. All right, so talking about that, going into program group, if you click right there where it says that, you'll be able to sign up for um, whatever program best matches what you're doing. Just as an example, I'll sign up for bachelor's in occupational health and safety. And you'll be able to see other people that are in this group too. Um, you'll be able to see different things that um, pop up. See um, down here, you'll see my groups and bachelor's in occupational health and safety or whatever yours will say. You'll see that there's a group discussion board. If you wanna meet people in your program, you can check that out. If not, um, that's okay, because that won't actually count towards your badge. But if you, if you just wanted to get to know some people, that'll work. Um, now that we've signed up for a group, let's go right back over to coursework. And now you'll see that there are four things here. This program group that we just signed up for, that was the only thing there before. So doing that adaptive release to these three folders. So we see traditional track, fast track, and about your badge. Next, we're gonna talk about what, um, what those traditional track and fast track are. So the traditional track is for new students and the fast track is more geared towards returning students. So basically the traditional track, it will have a lot more detailed instructions about things while the fast track will be kind of testing out basically. So first I'm gonna talk about the fast track. Uh, when you click on that, you'll see that there is a test. Um, it requires Respondus Lockdown Browser. If you want more information about that, uh, you can look it up here at the very bottom. Um, um, you'll if you take that test, you'll need to open it directly through Respondus. Uh, besides that, you'll need to uh, sign up for the Career Management Centers. Um, Besides that, you'll need to sign up for the career management centers, hire SE grads, all that stuff. Uh, basically, that's just a way to uh, have the this, this school help you with getting a job. Uh, whenever you've done that, you click Mark Reviewed and same for this part where it's trainings on the student wellness and services. After you've done that, you'll do the end of orientation survey for the fast track and that'll be it to get your badge. If you see down here, you'll see that it says um, traditional track has some information that you might find useful. If you want to go there, it's recommended. Um, it just has extra information if you're interested. And remember to click mark reviewed. Actually click on it to, you'll see this check mark and it will say reviewed. Um, and in some courses that actually may be the adaptive release as we talked about just previously. Um, now that we've looked at fast track, let's look right quick at the traditional track. So for traditional track, there are four objectives with little sub things inside of them and then an end of orientation survey after. The first one talks about how to navigate Blackboard and all the features that are involved in Blackboard. 
The second one talks about um, technology resources. The third talks about uh, Southeastern specific um, resources and services. And the last one talks about being prepared to learn um, for an online class or any class that uses Blackboard. So going through the first objective, you'll see there's stuff about the website, the app, there's a discussion board to complete. Um, and for that one, just as a note, you'll need to click on this one and do this one specifically. The group discussion board will not count towards your badge. Um, and just like the other one, you'll see this mark reviewed button. Whenever you've reviewed that information, you'll click on it. Clicking on that basically is saying that you are accountable for that information. It's like signing a contract saying, I know this stuff. Um, so again, for this discussion board, right here, this one you don't need to click mark reviewed because it'll be based on you doing two posts as it um, says in there, a total of two posts must be made. All right, and you also see other forms of communication, um, completing assignments, tests, and more information about respondents will be found here. If you want to see what that objective is, it's objective 1D. Um, and you'll have a video and all that. Once you're, uh, again, comfortable with that, you'll click Mark Reviewed. Um, objective 1E um, a lot, talks about how you can personalize Blackboard. So like your picture that's in the top corner or the calendar, my grades, such, and all that. Objective 2 talks about um, the technology resources, like we said before. So it starts off with a test about technology skills. You can review this information here. If you click on the links that say click here, you'll learn about lots of the things that will be on the test. Um, if you want some information about Respondus, because this test requires Respondus, as you can see right there, um, you can review Objective 1B, one, sorry, 1D, or um, you can check out the Grade Center information on Objective 1E. You must score 80% or higher for this to count towards your badge. Um, apart from that, you'll talk about different programs you'll need for, um, or I guess different technologies you'll need for your programs in the in your learning degree. Um, talk about email, Campus Connect, technical support such as Blackboard, Help Desk, all of that. There's also an assignment to complete, which uh, this is here basically so you can learn about the technology of YouTube and how all that works. Um, the, there are instructions if you click here about how to create a channel, upload a video, um, and I believe the instructions also include how to attach that, or I guess link to that video in the assignment. We'll talk about assignments later and how to complete it, where, so I'll go more into that later. Um, and then I'll other talk, it will talk about other technology resources like Linda or um, Creative Cloud. Down here at the bottom, this isn't required for the badge, just uh, some useful information. Here are some Facebook pages and even Instagram actually. Um, for different Southeastern pages. This isn't every Southeastern page that ever exists, um, but it's here in case you wanna maybe follow a different page. Going to objective three, it's talking about um, Southeastern specific information. Um, so you'll see it starts with a test and this one does not require responder. So you can use this in any browser, Safari, Chrome, Firefox, etc. cetera. Uh, to complete this test, you'll need to get an 80% or higher for the badge. Um, and you can review information where, again, where it says click here and other links. Um, there's also a library tutorial before it, or I, uh, below it. And um, with that, it's not required towards the badge. You see there's not a mark reviewed or anything. Um, so that one's just for your information if you want to learn more about the library. Besides that, um, there are other academic support resources for tutoring and stuff. We're actually going through a shift from smart thinking to tutor.com, so this information will need to be updated soon. It's a very new thing, but we'll be sending out an email about that, so keep checking your emails. Uh, we'll also talk about how to purchase course materials and all that, so basically the campus bookstore and um, reviewing all that information there. Also talk, we'll also talk about accessibility services. Um, again, we'll talk about the SE Career Management Center. It's the same thing as what um, Fast Track was talking about, so that's good. Um, We'll also talk about how to pay tuition, check their accounts. Um, and again, just like Fast Track is talking about um, the student wellness services and Haven and all that. Um, again, for additional resources, this isn't required for your badge. Um, there are other links to pages here, such as the academic calendar, scholarships, campus police, etc. Moving on to objective four, 
This one talks about the online environment specifically. So you'll see that there is um, an etiquette part where we're talking about what's appropriate. We've seen a little bit throughout this broadcast, some notes about an etiquette, um, but all that information will be right here if you click here. Once you understand all that, click Mark Reviewed. We'll also talk about the academic calendar more so here. I know it's LinkedIn Objective 3, but this is where it actually counts towards your badge by clicking Mark Reviewed. There's also an assignment right here. Now, again, we'll talk about the assignment a little bit more in a minute. But um, that one's talking about time management and how you can best use that as an online student. Um, there's also study habits, which will be useful for any student. Um, and then there's some um, student information about academic policy, student handbook, and also you'll see a, pr a program folder that's specific to what you signed up for your group. So you see that this says occupational health and safety undergraduate, which is the group I signed up for earlier. And it'll show whatever group you're in. And going into that folder, you'll just see information that's relevant to your program. And um, you can jump back to the folder by clicking this link. All right, so once you've done all that, you'll complete the survey. And after you've done all that for the um, traditional track, you should be um, done. You should be able to check on your badge. And whenever you want to check on your badge, you'll go to your badge over here. Um, that is it. Thank you for your time. All right, talking about assignments. So in this orientation specifically, we try to give you a couple practices with um, submitting an assignment, specifically in um, Objective 2F, and the other one is, um, I believe, Objective 4D. We'll get there in a minute, but so talking about this one. So this is talking about creating a YouTube channel, uploading a video, and sharing it in an assignment. So as an example, let's um, say that I created a video and I'm going to link to it. We're going to click directly on this link title right here. This is Objective 2F. And this applies to any course, by the way. Um, in the future, if you see an assignment, you'll click right on the link to get to whatever the assignment is asking you to do. So for this one, it's asking you to link to a YouTube video. So for this specifically, you'll see that there's an option to write submission or browse my computer. Since we're linking to a YouTube video, we're gonna click on write submission and we're going to link to our YouTube video. Um, so if you know the address, you can link to it here. If not, it's fine. I'm just, for a test, going to um, put in, hold on. I'm just going to leave it like that for a little bit and Ideally, you will um, select it and make it into a link. Um, hold on, sorry. And um, if you do that, make sure to open in a new window. All right, and then click insert. Okay. So now that we've done that and it's linking to a specific video, that's all we need for this assignment. So we can click on submit. You'll see it right here and you can click on it and it'll take you directly to it in a new tab. So that's awesome. It worked. Moving on, we'll be able to go on our, I guess after that you can click on OK to get right out and it'll take you straight to um, where you were before. So you can see it right here. Now, if we jump on down to objective four, it's objective four C, sorry. Um, so for this one, you're going to need to click on this link right here to download the personal time management plan. Um, it's a Word document that you'll complete and then upload. So like we did before, we're going to um, click on this link right here. This is Objective 4C or whatever the title of your assignment may be. When you click there, you'll be taken to a page that has the instructions again, show you how many points it is, all that. This time, since we're uploading a document again, we will click on Browse My Computer. So first, you can download it from here directly right there. Um, and I have actually completed this before. So I'm going to go to my downloads and upload it just right now. All right, so now we can see it right here. Um, we've uploaded it, it's all in there. 
we can see what it will be titled in there. And if you didn't want to attach that one, say you had two different versions, you can click on do not attach. Since I do want this one, I'm going to leave it alone. If you have a comment, you can leave that here. It won't be the same as writing a submission. This one is just kind of a side thing on the um, on the page. I'll show you what I mean. Hello, and once everything is how you want it, you click on submit. And you'll see right here, this is the document. It's being converted. You'll be able to see a preview in just a second, and you can see my comment on the side right here. Um, and just to show you what it will look like whenever it's actually um, converted. I'll refresh the page and you can see exactly what it says right there. That's exactly what the document looks like. Now that we've done that, we can click on OK. And if you need another attempt, there was a um, start new right here. Start new. Um, but we don't need to do that, so I'm going to click on OK. And that's it for how to submit assignment for this um, orientation specifically but this applies to any course. If you need to upload something, you use that browse my computer option. And if you need to just type um, a response or link to a web page, you would just use that um, write, my sub write submission sorry, option. All right, well, that is it. Thank you for listening. Respondus Lockdown Browser is a web browser that is required by some tests that you will take on Blackboard. The main reason why Respondus is required is that it provides a safe environment for the student to take an online test, and it also meets the conditions that the instructor finds appropriate for that test. As you can notice, Respondus doesn't allow you to go to a different website or even to open a new tab. If you also try to take a test that requires responders in a different browser, you will notice that a password is required. Although if you open that test using responders, the password will be filled automatically. On some tests, you are required to have a webcam and a microphone. Once you have finished taking the test, you can close responders and continue using your browser of choice. All right, this is an example course. Um, obviously your course will not have the student preview mode is on. If you click on coursework, it will bring you to the coursework folder where your weekly assignments, um, all of your homework assignments will be here. Right now there's the orientation proof of completion. 
If you click on that, it will bring you to an upload assignment orientation proof of completion page where you'll see the points possible, what is this, academic dishonesty, who does this apply to, and how do I turn this in? Most importantly, there is the this must be submitted in order to gain access to your weekly folders and coursework. To upload your badge, go ahead and click on browse my computer and go to the place where you saved your badge. Select the file and check to make sure that it's the correct file. If you selected the wrong one, there's always the do not attach button where you can remove and delete the file. Then just go ahead and click on submit. It will bring you to a new page, the review submission history orientation proof of completion page, where you will see a preview of your badge. Note that your badge should have your name included in the screenshot so your instructor can check to make sure it is you. In the corner, you'll have the grade and attempt. You don't need to worry about those things. Just go ahead and click on OK. And now you can see all of your coursework. These are your folders. This is where your assignments will be. watching our presentation. There was one question that was asked before we started that presentation that we didn't get to answer. Hopefully you saw the answer uh, when it talked about Respondus, but I just want to cover a few bases just to make sure that you caught that. Respondus is going to be required in some of your classes for tests. It's a way to proctor the tests um, that are taken online. Not all classes use it, but some do. In the orientation, you're only required to use the monitor, not the, um, sorry, you're only required to use the browser, not the monitor. So you don't have to have a webcam yet. But if you use Respondus in your classes, you are going to need to have a webcam also. Um, some other things that we wanted to point out about Respondus is that it is not compatible on Chromebooks and it also has some problems with Android. If you have any questions, you have any problems with Respondus, you're welcome to ask via live chat or the technical support request form um, or walk in or call. Um, again, CIDT's number is 580-745-3185. Um, were there other Respondus related questions? Um, Oh, one other thing about Respondus, just to point out, a lot of times we are asked um, what the password is for Respondus. If you're being asked for a password, you're not in Respondus. Respondus is a browser. You cannot take a Respondus test in Chrome, Firefox, um, Explorer, or Safari. You have to not only download Respondus, but then open Respondus instead of another server and take the test in there. Um, so. Make sure that you are inside Respondus before you click to take the test. All right, so before we leave, we wanted to let you know who David Campbell is. He sent us a picture, and you need to make sure that you look for him at homecoming, at football games, at other events that you may have. We are pulling that picture. Where's the picture? <laughs> Any other questions while I'm waiting? <laughs> Uh, Alicia's in it. Okay, we're gonna email everybody a picture of David. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry, David. I tried. <laughs> All right, we are gonna sign off and we'll post this video in case you need to watch it again later. Bye. <laughs>